So you're probably aware of the expression, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But is that really true? Especially when guys are talking about eight, nines and tens, ranking women in terms of their beauty. Is it really subjective? Is your nine different to my nine? Or is there an objective center? Well, fortunately, I've been looking through the data from a US dating app and we do have some empirical evidence to back up what is a nine, what is a 10, what is a five, what is a three. So in this video, I'm gonna get a bit geeky on you with a few graphs, just one or two simple ones to explain exactly what is a, objectively a nine and a 10 and what the beauty benchmark for a nine and 10 is here in Eastern Europe. Watch me. Sar experience. So I did say we're gonna get a little bit geeky, just a little bit in this video. So I'm gonna pull up two graphs from okcupid.com, which is a dating site in the US primarily. And uh, they have two interesting statistics here, plotted out into these nice charts for us, how women rate men and how men rate women. So very interesting because they're completely different in terms of the trend. Let's look first at how men rate women. And there you can see it's pretty much like a bell curve, I would say. Like we can't really see uh, the extremes uh, to see how much it goes down like a bell curve, but I think it's pretty close. I'm gonna make that analogy in this video. And there you can see that pretty much men kind of get it right because you know you got 6% is the least attractive, most attractive is also 6%, and then the other percentage in between, you got 20% being right in the middle and 18 and 16 to one side, and then the other side is 19 and 15. So that's pretty much spot on. So men are actually pretty good at this in terms of uh, <laughs> rating it seems. Uh, let's look conversely at how women rate men. Yeah, <laughs> women basically think that, uh, from this data, that's what we're extrapolating, that uh, almost no men are above average. Well, ipso facto, 50% of them should be uh, either on one side or the other, right? Uh, but they actually rate the vast majority of men as being below average. There it looks to me just self hand It's like 81%. <laughs> so that's why you get the phenomenon dating apps in particular that most women are swiping left, right? And most of the men are kind of swiping uh, probably even evenly, but they're probably more thirsty. So swiping right a lot of times that creates a big imbalance on these dating apps. Straight away you can see that there. So how men rate women, as I just, as we just saw from the OK, Cupid data is more or less analogous with a bell curve. So you have everything concentrated in the middle and then at the extremes, you have kind of evenly distributed on both sides in terms of being attractive and not attractive, right? When men rate women, not when women rate men, clearly, according to that data. If, and it, by the way, if you have better data or data that contradicts that, then please drop a link down below in the comment section, it'd be great to see that. But that is the best data I was able to find so far. As you see with a normal standard uh, distribution, we get to the right of 1.5 standard deviations to the right. You go on further than that, you get 6.7%, which is really close to that 6% in the first graph for the most attractive, right? Interesting, it pretty much correlates here uh, with the bell curve and normal distribution. So as a result, we can say, and I'm being a little bit arbitrary, obviously, uh, and picking these numbers, but this is what I think guys mean in general. Uh, if they say a seven plus, it's gonna be that six to seven, six point that is above, that is in that most attractive uh, category. And then you can go along, you can see that if you go another half standard deviation, you're gonna to get to an A plus, that's a 2.3%. So I plotted out these figures. Uh, I made 8.5 around a 0.6. Just think that uh, this half point jump accounts for less variation, probably at the top end, but that's just me uh, being a little bit judicial with how I, or maybe arbitrary with how I assigned the data a little bit here. And then a nine plus is gonna be that 0.1%, which is one in a thousand. I think, yeah, if you're gonna call someone a nine, they probably wanna be more or less in that kind of ballpark. And then obviously we get to 9.5 or a 10, if that even exists, a 10 in the world, if you wanna go that far up, uh, and that's gonna be less than 0.1%. So there you see, if you are, yeah, think about it uh, in terms of the data. So we say the most attractive, 
according to OKCupid is the top 6%. Also, they think the least attractive is also the bottom 6%. And looking at the normal distribution, that it more or less corresponds. So we get that data that I put in there. Again, drop me a comment down below and let me know what you think. So what is the point of all this? Well, it's to give you a bit of more of a benchmark. But interestingly, because I deal with Eastern Europe and Western guys coming here, and I guess more recently because I'm here in Poland with the Russo-Ukrainian war going on, not bringing clients at the moment to Ukraine, Russia or Belarus, uh, you have a lot of women who have come not just to Poland from Ukraine or from Belarus, in fact, but they've gone further west. So they go uh, to other parts of the European Union or they go further abroad than that. They go to the United Kingdom, they go over to North America. There's over 100,000, I think, Ukrainians have gone to the United States on a special program, Unite for Ukraine, and also to Canada and other parts of the West. So in terms of geomaxing, I have another video on that. Can uh, I'll put it up on a card up there, down below in the description. Uh, so what happens in terms of when people move, either a guy moves to Eastern Europe or conversely, uh, an Eastern European woman goes to the West. Let's have a look using this chart. Because I think we have a pretty objective framework now to work with. So we'd say that, uh, for example, a Ukrainian woman who comes to Poland probably goes another half standard deviation to the right on that chart. So if she is a seven, then she's probably an eight here. If she goes again further west, maybe she goes to United Kingdom, maybe she goes to my home country of Ireland. Well, she's probably going to jump up another half standard deviation because in general, it's a generalization, whether people like or not, dating is more or less a marketplace, right? Women on average in Western Europe or in Central Europe are not as con not considered as beautiful on average as women in the countries further to the east in Europe, right? And that kind of corresponds as you go further west. They'll probably go to an 8.5 if they show up at the UK. If they go to somewhere, I'm just going to pick on one country I've actually never been to, but its reputation for beauty is not the best, is Bolivia and Latin America. Well, if they go all the way to Bolivia for some reason, uh, they're probably going to go another half state deviation and be a nine, right? So what is going on here? Well, basically the local market in terms of beauty, well, they are way more competitive. They've moved across on that graph and how men are going to perceive them. So in that case, the woman will be geomaxing her potential in terms of dating and in terms of her value on the local dating market, right? And I know to a certain extent that there's been internationalization of beauty with all these apps, the internet, people traveling a lot more. I have another video about that, the link up above and down below. It was a vodka vodcast from a couple of years ago, but notwithstanding that, there is going to be a local effect when you move country and that is also why I have another vodcast about the value gap for a lot of guys in the past who would have, say, uh, come to Ukraine, maybe gone to one of those dodgy marriage agencies, actually be one of the few ones, lucky ones who actually met someone, brings her back to the West, besides, I guess, to get married. Well, what do you think happened? She just jumped probably, you know, from being a 6.7 percenter to a maybe a one, uh, less than 0.1 percenter. Right, depending where he brought her, and that's going to change the uh, dynamics dramatically, especially if the girl's primary reason to marry the foreigner was for socioeconomic um, advancement, which is hypergamy. If you don't know what that is, it is the trend of women to marry across and up on socioeconomic hierarchies. It's socioeconomic, just, not just about money, but also about social status. It's a phenomenon that we have uh, across cross-cultural in general. Even if we just say, there's no difference between the guys. Her uh, opportunities are going to be, because she's going to be higher up competitively in the countries she's moved to, she's going to have a lot more opportunities. Also, you may have an effect where the guy has actually lost a little bit of attractiveness. Uh, as you can see, women are more ruthless at how they rate men, considering they think that only, what, we, what was 81% or below average, and only, I think it was like, whatever, 7% or something, 8% of that graph were above average that, yeah, they can make pretty dramatic decisions when they're already there in the, the new country. So what happens conversely when a Western guy goes to Eastern Europe? Well, obviously it works in reverse because when you're looking at your dating options, uh, then you're going to see that what you might have considered to be a seven, an attractive woman when you're back in, I don't know, walk, walking around the shopping mall in uh, Wisconsin, uh, and then you're suddenly in a similar shopping mall in Kiev, in Ukraine, or maybe you're in Minsk, or maybe you're in St. Petersburg, uh, or somewhere else in Eastern Europe, 
uh, more likely, I guess, these days to be Almaty, Riga, or uh, Chisinau, Moldova, then suddenly you just see sevens galore, right? You see a lot more women that you consider beautiful. Now, of course, I made a video a few years ago about the Ukraine beauty effect, and then basically that's gonna wear off. You're gonna become uh, acclimatized to the level of beauty in East Europe, because in my opinion, it is the part of the world on average with the most beautiful women on average. Of course, there are exceptions. There are beautiful women that you can find in all countries in the world, uh, but here there just happens to be more. Right now I'm actually in Poland, so to be very clear, I'm in the eastern part of Central Europe, uh, but it's pretty close. And uh, basically after a while you're gonna become uh, acclimatized and what you would have perceived as a nine before suddenly for you just becomes probably an eight or a seven. So you have a little bit of lux or beauty inflation, I think, uh, in that sense, um, when you are you know, hanging out in Eastern Europe and you, this becomes your new norm. Of course, since us guys are primarily visual, that is not the only thing that we judge women on, but it is normally the first thing and we put a lot of value to that for biological reasons. Um, basically it goes back to evolutionary biology and who is going to be a good mate in order to uh, reproduce with. Are they going to be healthy? Are they likely to be able to bear lots of children? All these kind of atavistic uh, traits that drive our preferences. It's not the only thing. We have obviously our psychology on top of that, but our evolution biology is important. So basically from that point of view, um, you are gonna have, well, you're gonna consider that you have a lot more women that you're bound to be attracted to. But of course, as I made in probably a hundred videos on this channel, that is not the only thing. If you don't have the culture and knowledge and know how to be uh, attractive to women in Eastern Europe, then that doesn't necessarily uh, translate into actually having a better dating life. But with the right approach and training, of course, you can do that. So now you have a better idea about what I mean when I talk about the nines and tens, the super beautiful of Eastern Europe, but how are you gonna meet them? How are you gonna be able to meet them in a situation where you might have a chance of dating some of them? Well, in spite of the growth of online dating over the last decade or so, my non-empirical hunch because I don't have any strong data suggesting how in fact the super beautiful meet their long-term partners or who they hook up with but my hunch definitely is that it's still social circle because super beautiful woman has basically an overkill of options right she's not going to go online almost ever to look for new options her job is to figure out and filter through all the, all the hundreds and hundreds of options that she has probably every weekend like here in Warsaw and Poland uh, like they have Instagram their guys sliding into their DMs all the time they obviously have their own life and social circle around here then they go out and they socialize so I still think that the majority of nines and tens are still meeting through social circle, right? And developing a social circle is something that I help my clients with when they live the Zara experience, but that is a long-term investment. It's not something that you can do uh, in the weekend. But the next best thing that you can do in the weekend is actually go out and socialize in the places where the nines and tens are hanging out and demonstrating your value to them and getting to meet them. That is pretty much why I have always focused as our experience, the weekend experience on going to the bars and clubs, the ones that you were likely to meet the women that you desire. And what are you doing next weekend? Because it could be you. I have been for the last six months living the Zara experience with my clients in places like Warsaw, Warszawa, in Poland, Chisinau, Moldova, Almaty, the big apple of Kazakhstan and just a couple of weeks ago, I was in Riga, the capital of Latvia, absolutely fantastic place. And we were going out and meeting the nines and tens of Eastern Europe and having an unforgettable weekend with them. As you might have guessed, the Zara experience is not for everybody. Like there's no point in me, to, me going with a guy to, you know, upscale cocktail bar or the top club, having a table with a guy who just doesn't have the confidence to hang out with nines and tens. He's not used to it. Maybe back home he's with the the five and sixes that is why it is by application only down below is an application form before you do that you should check out a special playlist that i put together i'll also link that up in the card somewhere up above also down below in the description and take a look at that and see if it's going to be a good fit 
because once you fill out the application form, I will review it personally. And if I think it's a good fit, then we're going to jump on a brief strategy call. And it could be you with me having an unforgettable weekend with the nines and tens of Eastern Europe. Of course, you can come to Poland, to Warsaw on your own and try your online dating. And to be frank, if you are interested in meeting a nice Eastern European six, seven, there's going to be lots of those on the dating apps. I'm sure I've seen it myself. I went and checked it out uh, personally, I loaded up Tinder and had a look myself. Also, if you want to be one of those guys, then one of my other videos that I'll link up above described as a loser, which is the day gamers, the guys are probably when the weather gets better, probably going to be walking up and down streets like here over here where people are walking to the train station here in the center of Warsaw and they're going to be stopping hundreds of women probably in a row basically been a bit of a dating panhandler until eventually they get a number or two and maybe they get eventually a date or maybe even meet someone that way but let's be frank about it <laughs> you ain't going to be getting the nines and tens if that's what you're planning to do I'm not sure what number is in 2023 is going to probably be interested in a guy, a random guy that they meet on the street. It's just not, it's just not realistic nowadays. So on that note, look forward to seeing your application. If you're the type of guy that has the value and desires the nines and tens of Eastern Europe, down below application form. And I'm going to say Papa from Poland. It's been fantastic. We got some sunshine because <laughs> it is February, 2023 when I'm doing, making this video. Definitely don't come to Poland for the weather in the winter. It reminds me of Minsk in Belarus. <laughs> Hardly uh, a few minutes of sunshine in the winter, but we got a little bit one for the end of this video. So, Papa from Poland. See you in the next one. Ciao. Sar experience.